Hello, I'm Roger Bisby from the Skill Builder channel. I just want to have a little rant, if you like, about air tightness in buildings because I've just been going through my emails. We get loads and loads of people asking questions, wanting help with problems in their houses. One thing that keeps cropping up time and time again is this problem of damp and mold and all sorts of respiratory problems that people are having. It seems to me that it has reached epidemic proportions. Now, some time ago, I did a video talking about the government's legislation where they wanted to increase air tightness in buildings and the idea of this is to save energy to lower heating bills by stopping drafts basically that's what it is so they want to stop the drafts coming into a building so that the building will stay warmer for less money and that's all very laudable nobody wants to pay big bills do they i don't i hate paying heating bills but i've got a drafty old house and i've been very reluctant to increase the air tightness of it because we don't get any damp we don't get any mold but i know that a lot of people up and down the street have changed their old rattly sash windows to nice pvc windows with draft proofing all the way around them sealed units and they've also done their door as well but what we're getting now is more and more people who are finding mold in their homes they can't do anything about it they keep cleaning it off the reason is they've stopped all those escape routes for that airborne moisture i said that i thought that we were in the middle of a bad experiment i thought that the government was a little bit short-sighted or a little bit over ambitious insisting on these levels of air tightness without insisting on some kind of mechanical ventilation either a heat recovery system ideally where it uh, takes the heat from the air that's being taken out and put some of that heat back into the building it can't take a hundred percent of the heat out but it can certainly take a good percentage of it out a heat recovery fan even if it's just a single point one or a whole house system what they call a mechanical ventilation heat recovery system bit of a mouthful that you can have one to do the whole house or you can just have it room by room or just put one big one in the other thing that you could do is put in a positive input ventilation fan which goes in the loft normally and that just puts the house under a little bit of pressure it just pumps a little bit of air through from the loft into the house filtered air it warms it up very slightly so that you don't get a cold draft and then what that does is it forces that airborne moisture out through the nooks and crannies in your house obviously the more nooks and crannies you've got the better if you've got lots of places is where you've got air leakage then you're very unlikely to have the problem in the first place but if you sealed your house up then what you need is something like that positive input fan and you just need to open those trickle vents a little bit and what you'll then find is that's forcing the airborne moisture out through those trickle vents rather than you having cold drafts coming in through them you won't even notice it apart from the running cost of that fan and as i said that fan has got a little heater in it and it will cost you probably somewhere around 60 pounds a year to run it you don't need to run it in the summer by the way in the summer you can just open your windows and because it's a bit warmer you won't be suffering the same problems but it's the winter when you're heating your house up increasing the moisture because you haven't opened any windows and you haven't got extractor fans on and all those kind of things we do get quite a lot of emails from landlords who saying i've got these tenants the tenants from hell they call them they've pulled the fuse out of the extractor fan they won't open the trickle vents they've put duct tape over the trickle vents they're insistent upon not putting any ventilation in because they don't want the cold drafts and the high bills and they're also drying washing on their radiators now it's not only tenants i'm not going to demonize tenants in favor of landlords but it's also people who own houses and maybe haven't got enough money to pay their heating bills and they've got to get their washing dry obviously so they dry the washing on the radiators and that causes a further problem and before long they They've got this mold growing everywhere. Their kids are all suffering from asthma. And the whole thing is just a downward spiral. I had one the other day where they had a toxicology report on the building. The toxicologist people came back with their recommendation. They said, get rid of everything. Get rid of everything in the house. That means your carpets, your furniture, your clothes, the whole lot. Because if you don't, and you think you're just going to clear the mould out of that house, and you're going to reintroduce your possessions into that house, then that mould is going to come back. Once you've got rid of the mould, once you've had a thorough cleanse of that house, I'm afraid that what they're saying is you've got to get rid of everything you own. A nightmare, isn't it? So far better 
not to have that far better to attack the problem at source before it becomes a huge problem and if it costs you 60 pound a year to run that positive input ventilation fan or a dehumidifier that's another great solution if you're drying washing if you've got nowhere else to dry washing and you have to dry it on the radiators or somewhere or maybe in one room then the best thing is just hang it in that one room and switch on the dehumidifier because that will suck the moisture out of the air you don't even need to heat that room because by sucking the moisture out the air you've introduced drier air and that will obviously let the washing dry because you know it's always going to go to a drier air so dehumidifier that's one great solution we've got links below if you want to put a positive input ventilation fan in we've got links to a really good one of those if you want to put in an extractor fan which senses the humidity levels just switches on when they get too high or switches to a higher level i've got some fans which are very very quiet and they just run on a whisper quiet low level all the time they cost pennies to run because these things are so efficient now and they just draw that heat out and of course if you do something like cooking or showering or anything like that the sensor in the fan will sense it and it will switch itself on to boost for a little while get rid of most of that moisture and that will prevent that mold from occurring and if you don't do that and you refuse to do any of those things even opening the windows once a day for a quarter of an hour before you put the heating on i know it's cold and i know it seems like a hell of a thing to do but a lot of people do do it blasting fresh air through your home get rid of all that moisture lowering the temperature then when you switch the heating on the heating isn't warming up the moist air and that is a tremendous improvement because if you've got cooler drier air in there then as the heating comes on and warms it up it's got less humidity obviously and what you will find is when you lower the humidity in your house you feel warmer it's actually a fact drier air makes you feel warmer so i'm roger bisbee and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up because that does help us make more videos but if you didn't like it well i'm very sorry about that maybe just give us a thumbs down then i've got a thick skin and it's getting thicker